Polar just released a new heart rate tracking algorithm as part of the sensor in the new Grid X2 Pro and Vantage V3. This should provide better performance, especially for weightlifting and different types of interval training. By testing it systematically, we will see if this new algorithm actually shows promise. So get ready for my initial testing of the hardware and firmware in these new Polar watches. And here you can see an overview of that performance for one of the easiest exercises for a watch to track, cycling indoors, which I tested on myself for three interval spinning sessions. Now to test the performance, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of both watches against the Polar H10 HD chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. Each dot in these plots is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and on the vertical axis the value according to the Grex2 Pro on the left and the Vantage V3 on the right, which matches the wrists I wore both devices on, so the Grex2 Pro on the left and the Vantage V3 on the right. Now the closer the points are to the blue line, the better the agreement, and the darker black the color, the more dots that there are. And as you can see, both did very similarly. Both have indeed most points on, or at least close to the blue line, but also both of them have a cloud of points above and below the blue line, indicating that sometimes the watch is detected at too high and sometimes at too low heart rate. Their correlations, which is the R value up here, are also identical at 0.85. Now the correlation cannot be higher than 1, so a correlation of 0.85 is okay, but definitely not great. But let's take a look at the individual spinning sessions to see how big the errors actually are. And here you can see the first example interval spinning session where we see a pretty decent agreement, in this case between the Polar Grid X2 Pro and the ECG chest strap. Along the horizontal axis we have the clock time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis, with in blue green my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and then red my heart rate according to the Grid X2 Pro. And as you can see for this right there's a pretty decent agreement. There were some small delays in it picking up on the change in my heart rate. You can see that for instance right here, right here, right here, here and also right here. But overall this isn't looking too bad. If we now look at the same ride but for the Vantage V3 we see a bit more disagreement. So there's a bit more delay also right here and right here. But especially right here it missed one of the peaks in my heart rate. Still overall not bad but a bit disappointing it missed this one peak. On the other hand for some rides like this one right here it was the Grid X2 Pro that showed more issues. So as you can see for this ride it missed quite a few of the peaks in my heart rate. For instance right here this one it also missed partially and here it actually missed a dip in my heart rate. So again not terrible but there's a bit more deviation right here. And if you look at the same ride but for the Vantage V3 which we have right here we actually see a better agreement. So most peaks in my heart rate are indeed detected in this case. Though we do again see a delay in it picking up an increase in my heart rate and it also misses some of the dips in my heart rate. Still overall not that bad I would say. And the same is true for this last example I want to show you. So I actually only started it in the middle of the ride but overall the agreement for the Grid X2 Pro is quite good and we generally see the same thing for the Vanish V3. So actually here in the beginning where I forgot to turn on the Grid X2 Pro it struggled a little bit. So overall not terrible performance but both the Vanish V3 and Grid X2 Pro sometimes struggle. So that looks okay-ish for the new heart rate tracking algorithm and for cycling indoors it might be good enough for many of you. However, for me, there are definitely better options out there for good heart rate tracking on the wrist. But as always, it might do differently on others, especially since Polar mentioned the signal on my wrist is quite bad for this particular sensor, so keep that in mind. However, let's now move on by showing you how the performance of the Grid X2 Pro and Vantage V3 compares to that of many other watches I've tested before. But before doing that, I do need to mention that Polar did send me these watches for review, but they didn't have any influence on this video or the results in any way. Let's get to it. And that overview is displayed right here. Now the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I'll use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis here. And we want that value to be as close to one as possible. And on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher devices, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here I marked the Grid X2 Pro and the Vantage V3 in red. And as you can see, they're doing almost identically. I also marked some other Polar watches I tested before in blue. So we have the Polar Vantage M, the Polar Pacer Pro and the Polar Ignite 3. And we also have my original testing of the Vantage V3 right here. 
And as you can see, compared to my original testing of the Vanish V3, there might be a slight improvement to the new algorithm, though it's difficult to say with certainty since the distance is not that big. But we can also appreciate that some other Polar watches with older sensors actually did better on me. So we have the Polar Vantage M, which potentially does a bit better, but especially the Polar Pacer Pro and Polar Ignite 3 with the older sensor do seem to perform better on me at least than the Grid X2 Pro and Vanish V3 with that newer sensor and newer algorithm. And as you can see, if we zoom into some of the better performing watches, so we have that overview right here. So these are just the watches with a correlation of 0.7 or higher. And some of the best performing watches here include different Apple watches and some selected Huawei devices. But for instance, also the Pixel Watch 2 is not doing too bad. And I would even say that these other Polar watches, so the Ignite 3 and Pacer Pro, which are in the second tier of watches, are not doing that terrible. They're doing about as well as the Whoopstrap 4.0 and the Coral Space 3. So pretty decent. And the Grid X2 Pro and Vantage V3, at least on me, perform significantly worse. As I said, this kind of performance might be good enough for many of you, especially since it might indeed do significantly better on most other people, that is, if we are to believe what Polar told me. Also, compared to the old algorithm, I'm not sure if I saw significant improvement. But let's now make things even more difficult for these two watches, and let's track them during an even harder exercise for them to track. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob, and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Like I said, we're gonna make things even more difficult and we're gonna do that by looking at cycling outside. I expect this exercise to have improved the least with the new algorithm since the new algorithm mostly improves performance for interval training with little movement between intervals and also for weightlifting. Cycling probably has too much continuous movement for the algorithm to provide any significant improvements, but maybe I'm wrong, let's see. And here we have a similar overview to before, but now for biking outside for a total of nine bike rides. And as you can see, the points aren't as close to the blue line as before. They're quite a bit further away from it. Now, the majority of points is generally still on or close to blue line, especially for the Grid X2 Pro. But we can see that there's quite a few more points away from the blue lines now. So both below it and above it, and especially below it right here for the Vanish V3. So both watches seem to be struggling. The Vanish V3 is potentially doing a tiny bit worse than the Polar Grid X2 Pro. So the Grid X2 Pro has a correlation of 0.64, whereas the Vanish V3 has a correlation of 0.47. Now, since they use the the same sensor and the same algorithm. My suspicion is that the sensor just struggles more with my right wrist than with my left wrist, which matches also what we saw in a previous video. So it could just be that the Vanish V3 had an unfair disadvantage being on my right wrist. Still, both of them are not doing great. But let's again look at the individual bike rides to see what's going on here. And this is the first example bike ride I wanted to share with you, with again the Polar H10 in blue green and the watch of interest, in this case the Polar Grex2 Pro in red. And as you can see, this looks not that great, I would say, but also not absolutely terrible. Some of the changes in my heart rate are detected, but again, some of the peaks in heart rate are missed. Now for this ride, the Vanish V3 actually looked relatively similar in performance. So we have that one right here. This one also misses some of the peaks in my heart rate, but it seems to detect about the same amount of peaks correctly. However, some of the rides were quite a bit worse. So this is the Grid X2 Pro for another ride, which again doesn't look amazing and misses some of the peaks, but also not terrible. So if we take a look at the Vanish V3 for the same ride, we see it does a lot worse. So many of the peaks in my heart rate aren't detected. And as we just saw, some of these were indeed more correctly detected by the Grid X2 Pro. And that's actually what we see for several of the rides. So this is again data for the Grid X2 Pro. And as you can see, the agreement is okay-ish at best. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but it definitely struggles a lot. But the Vanish V3 in this case, this is again the same ride, it struggles a lot more. It generally keeps detecting a way too low heart rate and only detects some of the peaks in my heart rate. Now again, I suspect this is not an inherent limitation of the Vanish V3 compared to the Grid X2 Pro, but just that both watches because of something in my physiology struggle more on my right wrist than on my left wrist. And again, here we have a similar overview to before, but now for biking outside, with also the Polar Vantage V3 and Grid X2 Pro marked in red, and some other Polar watches marked in blue. And you can see right here that there is a bit of distance between the Grid X2 Pro and the Vantage V3, with the Grid X2 Pro doing a tiny bit better. And they're also not that far from the other Polar watches, so the Ignite 3, Pacer Pro, and the original testing of the Vantage V3. Again, there might be a tiny improvement of the Vantage V3 with the new algorithm, but nothing Thing to write home about honestly and as you can see all these polar watches are among some of the poorer performing watches if you want decent heart rate tracking during cycling again my recommendation would be apple watches 
the Fitbit Charge 6, the Pixel Watch 2 again as well, but even the Coral Space 3 and some Garmin watches are not doing that terrible. I personally wouldn't recommend these Polo watches for cycling outside, at least not based on my testing. And if you do decide to get one, I would recommend getting a chest strap to go with it. Okay, that's not looking too great honestly, but as I said, I didn't expect major improvements for cycling outside. There might be a slight improvement though, but we need more data to be sure, and still the potential improvement we see isn't huge. However, what I do hope to get an improvement is for weightlifting. Now, weightlifting is one of the exercises this new algorithm was specifically designed for. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those link below. Also, I'm trying to become part of the first people who receive watches to review from companies like Polar, but also Garmin. And if you want to help me make that happen, it would really help if you like, subscribe and or comment. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance of the new algorithm for weightlifting. And again, a similar overview to before, but now for weightlifting. In this case, I used two weightlifting sessions. And as you can see in the lower heart rate range, indeed, most points are close or onto the blue line. And this is true for both watches. But in the higher heart rate range for both watches, most points are below the blue line. To me, indicating that during the peaks in my heart rate, so during the sets that I did, that the watches wasn't able to track that increase in my heart rate. And we've seen this for many watches. But let's take a look at the individual weightlifting sessions to see if this is indeed the case. Now we're just going to quickly look at one example of a weightlifting session where each peak here is a set of exercises that I did. And as you can see, in this case, the GridX2 Pro wasn't able to detect most of the peaks in my heart rate. So that isn't looking very good. And if we look at the same training session, but now for the Vantage V3, we have that one right here. We also see it misses many, if not most of the peaks in my heart rate. So for both of them, it isn't looking that great, though potentially the Vantage V3 did a tiny bit better in this case. And again, here we have a similar overview to before, but now for weightlifting. So we want those watches to be as far to the top right as possible. And as you can see, the Grex2 Pro and Vantage V3 marked in red are not doing that great. They're very close to each other, but also very close to other Polo watches. Again, the Vantage M, Ignite 3, Pacer Pro and the original testing of the Vantage V3. And all of them are just not doing good enough, honestly. And that's actually true for most watches. Most watches just aren't good enough to track your heart rate during weightlifting. Only these Apple watches and potentially some of these Huawei devices and maybe the Fitbit Charge 6 and Pixel Watch 2 are doing good enough, but all these other devices just aren't doing good enough, at least not on me. So again, I would recommend pairing a chest strap with your Polar device. Okay, also for weightlifting, I don't see a substantial improvement in terms of heart rate tracking. And all the Polar watches I tested in the past as well are more or less the same area as these two watches. Even with the updated algorithm, many of the peaks in my heart rate just aren't detected by both the GridX2 Pro and Vantage V3. So my overall conclusion based on this initial test of the new sensor and algorithm in these new Polar watches seems to indicate that at least on me, there hasn't been a significant improvement in heart rate tracking. Again, Polar did say that the sensor performed atypically bad on me compared to most other people, so my results might be a fluke. So again, check out other reviews as well. But I still hope and expect in a way that this kind of data-driven analysis is useful for people like you. Also, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do a test for running because of an injury, but I'll add that in a future video. If you do like the design and our functionality of the Polar Grid X2 Pro or Vantage V3, I would recommend getting the Polar H10 HD chest strap to go with it. That way you get very reliable heart rate tracking and you don't have to worry about the performance of the optical heart rate sensor in the watch. Now, if you do decide to get a Polar watch, a Whoop strap, an Aura ring, an HD Pod 3, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, want to potentially save some money and at the same time support this channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Given that you watched this whole video on two Polar watches, I suspect you might also like this video on the Garmin Foreigner 165, a watch I really liked or this video on my top recommendations for sports and health tracking. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.